can't buy It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here live at IRCE, inspiredinsider.com. I'm here with Tom Montgomery's co-founder of Chubby's. Yep. And I just want to start off with when did Chubby's start? Uh, so Chubby started in uh, 2011, September of 2011. Um, so we launched a short men's shorts brand right in the heart of fall, which is a really good time to Perfect be launching time. in the United States. Um, and yeah, it was it was four buddies from college uh, who had a dream of clothing, you know, the men of the world in tiny shorts. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, Tom, I was wondering. So, you know, you went to Stanford, yeah. right? And so, you may have been growing up. You're just like, one day I want to own a uh, tiny shorts company. What did you want to do when you grew up? So that's, that's funny. I'm originally from Bakersfield, California, um, so a far cry from Silicon Valley. Uh, the businesses I knew were oil, farming, and my dad was a fast food guy. Uh, what did your dad do? He, he owned a couple of Wendy's restaurants. Really? <laughs> yeah, so I was raised on, you know, the uh, Junior Bacon Cheeseburger and Frosties and all that You're stuff. You're in good shape. For- yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but so I, the thing is, is like when you go to Stanford, you're exposed to a whole new world of entrepreneurship, and I had no idea. So most of my college career was like, you know, what the heck's going on? Trying to figure out my bearings and trying. But you to- were always. I mean, you grew up in an entrepreneurial household with your dad. Yeah, yeah I knew I wanted to do something entrepreneurial. It's just the world that I thought, how I thought about it was different. I wasn't. I went from thinking about it as like, hey, maybe I'll run an oil business to, you know, maybe I'll try and start a tech company. You know, yeah. and so. You know, for us, I worked in venture capital for three years. That was really a big survey of like, what are the businesses that are out there? I really started to get passionate about e-commerce because there was this cool relationship with a customer that you can have in a really big scale. And you also can have that in media. And so it's funny that Chubby's is kind of this blend of commerce and media um, because both of those were areas that are really, really interesting to me. And, and then the business kind of originated because we all wore short shorts. You know, we all wore them. They were handed down from our dads or our really? uncles or we'd find them at thrift shops where you couldn't get them anywhere. Um, and so the product was... For some reason you say that, I picture like John Stockton. That, uh, that's should. what I picture. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> me. That's, that's, that's an honor to be thrown right, in the right. same bucket as John Stockton. Um, but so we had a product and we thought this product was really cool. And then there was also this, this world of men's fashion that was totally foreign to us. The Abercrombie Fitch where they show you the abs and they've got, you know, six pack guys spraying you with cologne. That wasn't me, that wasn't my friends. And so we tried to kind of take this product and build, um, you know, this, this kind of fashion revolution around it that is like, no, that's not us. Let's build something relatable. Let's build something about fun, about the weekend that doesn't take itself very seriously. Um, and the real inspiration for that was our dads and John Stockton and all these old photos of guys who just looked like they were having the best time. They they weren't self-conscious. And uh, and so that formed the basis of what became kind of the Chubby's brand. Yeah. So, you know, oftentimes when people start companies, it, it's not, <clears throat> it doesn't start off the same as what it is today. What was the first iteration of the company? What was the first product? First iteration was, you know, we had to figure out how to manufacture products. We had to figure out how to get different colors. We had to figure out how to uh, do all, how to fulfill them. We did all of that ourselves. Um, and so, first iteration was as simple as it could possibly be. It was a pair of white shorts that we would dye different colors, and uh, and we would ship them out ourselves from our apartment. We would take boxes of of shorts and go take them to the local post office and just ship them out like that. Um, and so obviously, you know, now we've got, you know, probably like, you know, whatever, a thousand SKUs and a really, really developed fulfillment operation, really developed manufacturing practices. Um, and, and so it's gone from kind of, you know, four guys in an apartment kind of messing around to, you know, something a little bit more serious. Similarly, on the marketing side of things, we've gone from, you know, 
being a little bit unsophisticated to now really understanding how content works, really understanding how to engage with our community. And, you know, we've got now a community of, you know, two million people on social media that are just like, you know, buddies of ours, which is really, yeah. really cool, a really cool feeling. How do you come up with new product ideas? Oh, golly, we had a brainstorm like what's, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, talk about the brainstorm. <laughs> uh, they're insane. Uh, we go all over the map and, uh, what was an idea yesterday? Yesterday, one of the ideas that I had was, uh, uh, you know, we have tearaway shorts I can't wait to hear that you can this. rip yeah. off. Yes. Well, I thought, well, maybe we could tear them away and then you can button them back up on your top half as a tank top. So <laughs> I feel like you guys need to be featured in like a Will Ferrell movie or yeah, something, yeah, like yeah, him tearing great. away the that chubby shorts. Great. Yeah, but uh, anyone out there knows Will Ferrell or any of those people. Send, like, we send, need to yeah, get a tearaway yeah. chubby shorts on you for one of these movies. He's the coolest guy. Yeah, yeah. we get, we gotta get. In touch so a tearaway that you, that you tear him away. You can tear him away, but then you could button what them up. What made you even think of that? That's yeah, we were. That's the point. It's, right. You, you, when we do our brainstorms, they go far like, and crazy. And and what we end up like with mushrooms about. Like, how do you get creative? No, we've got. We've got like, what really, do you do really to get the creative juices going in that it's sense? The like, it's the people, you know. Yeah. And now we've got a team of, uh, you know, I guess 90 total, but in the uh, in the main office about 50, and uh, it's just amazing people. You know, that's something that's yeah. intangible, and that's something that you learn as you go along. We started with four people, um, and every hire that you make adds to your culture. And yeah. we've got a great culture. We've got great people in the business, and they're always looking at how can we push the envelope, how can we yes. do something different. Um, and so, you know, the creative process has always been something that is like just balls, you know, just bonkers. Yes. <laughs> bonkers. I love hearing those. Tom, what's one that you thought of that this one hasn't hit the market yet, that, that particular tearaway that goes in a tank top, but what's one that you are surprised that actually took off? You're like, let's just test it, let's go with it, and let's see what happens that it actually took off. The one that did well for us is, is short overalls. Um, so overalls that, you know, end in shorts. Yeah. Um, and we made them ridiculous, we made them outrageous, um, and we knew that there would be some demand. You know, I think uh, stuff that you can wear in a really fun way that's funny and, and you know, gets attention is always a good thing, is always good for us. Right. Um, but we just didn't quite realize how, how resonant it would be. And so every time we put them Why out, they've think? sold out instantly. Because it's fun, it's funny. You know, I think uh, one of the things about our customer base is that they're fun, funny people and they don't take themselves too seriously that's nothing that you know you're going to be planning on wearing to a wedding uh <laughs> unless you're just Maybe a boss it's a farm <laughs> yeah, Who knows? Be, yeah. Uh, but uh but yeah it's a fun group of people and, and i think the lightheartedness that that we try and bring to everything that we do yeah. really came across in those and so people responded so you're doing some cutting edge stuff with social media and that's one of the things you're talking about at irc yeah. talk about some of the things that you're doing Online. Oh golly! Uh, anything that is happening in social media, we're trying to, you know, outdo. Um, so what I'm talking about here today is Snapchat, Instagram Stories, kind of a short form, low production value video content that only exists for like a day. Um, so all the work you put into it is instantly moved 24 hours That's later. That's painful. Uh, but uh, but we've done everything and anything under the sun with that. We tried to build a full TV series on Snapchat. Um, that hopefully our customers enjoyed. Um, we've really messed around with the special effects on the platform. We've had people running up walls like you see in the Matrix, except for without any special effects. So that's been that's fun. Um, you know, and from a content side of things, that you know that's one of the things we've really tried to innovate on uh, with Snapchat and Instagram Stories is just production because when you're in those platforms, you eliminate the ability to edit video and to make it look too polished, because if it's too polished, it looks like an ad. People like it, yeah, people yeah. like the real deal video. The real, and, and they like seeing things that they could do themselves. Um, and so that's been really fun to kind of level the playing field with the big guys and have it just be about creativity, and that's why those platforms are so cool. And then broadly through social media, you know, that's that's the way we connect with our fans and with our community, and um, that's the closest we can get to one to one. And so we just try and have as much fun as possible with them, put out as much content as we can to give them a laugh or give them a smile. Yeah. Um, and so you know, if you're encountering us on social media, hopefully that's happening. Right. There's two things. I mean, <clears throat> you guys are wildly successful, have a lot of huge fans. I always like to hear about two things, the challenging parts. It's not easy running a company, and then something you're really proud of from the company. What's, what's been challenging uh, with, yeah. as far as running the company? I mean, you know, every day there's a new thing. You know, I think, uh, I think that, you know, currently, um, 
what's been challenging for us is staying in stock of products, right? Like we sell That's out. That's a of good product. problem. Yeah, but it's not. It's not for the customer. For the customer, it's they want to get what they want. You know, and, and we'll have products that we'll put out that will sell out in two days, um, and that's not a great experience. And so, yeah. if you go on the site at any given moment, you kind of see a lot of stuff is out. Um, and so, yeah, how do you forecast? Exactly. It's, how do you forecast? How big are your bets? Because you don't want to be sitting on a ton of inventory. Right. And, um, you know, with a small business like us, where we don't have as much cash just, as the Nikes, it's as just the like big guys. money sitting in. Yeah, sitting yeah, in. and and that can be something that really damages a company. Um, and so, understanding that and being better about that and interacting with our customer base more is kind of how we're solving that to understand like how much do you guys like this? How how big should we yeah. bet behind these concepts? Yeah. How do you hedge um, that? Are there like surveys you put out? Or yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How do you? Yeah, yeah. forecasting. It's we tough. put out a ton of surveys. Yeah. We ask. We have a group of uh, about 400 campus ambassadors that we ask. We ask our loyal customers. Um, we try and get as many data points as possible. And for us, we're realizing just the more the better. And so we're doing more and more and more of that to try and get tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, but that's that's you know. That's the fundamental resale be problem. problem with any is, physical Can you goods predict problem. what'll sell before it sells? <laughs> and if we can figure that out, then you know we're geniuses. Uh, but so you well, know, you, that's you one you of know, with social media, I mean, you sort of you tend to have a more of a finger on the pulse of things. Yeah, yeah, right? and, and we have access to more people. You know, I think relative to other people out there, or, or the way that businesses used to get started, we have a subscriber base of two million people, and we have more than, you know, we have another group of people on our email list. We have another group of people who are hitting our site. So we can get feedback from a lot of people, which is very different from kind of the old world where you had your store and your footprint was the people that walked by that store. And then otherwise you were buying time. You were buying media from uh, the TV spots or in print or whatever. Now we can build our own channels. We have our own audience because we kind of try and develop content. And so we can interact with them in a much more, um, Authentic like way. Direct, yeah, authentic. Yeah. Um, a proud moment, a milestone that you hit that you're especially proud of. Well, I, I'm always proud of the team. You know, the team we've put together uh, is amazing. You know, they're the most creative, hardworking, intelligent people out there. Um, and you know, we wouldn't be where we are today without any of the folks there. And everyone, you know, really does crush it. Um, and so that's awesome. It's awesome to see the the, the level of people that we're out, that we're able to attract to the mission. Yeah. Um, well, on that point for a second, you know, culture is big for you. How do you foster a great culture? I know it starts from the top down, but what are some yeah. things that you advise other people to do? Yeah, I mean, for us, transparency is key, like being very communicative, um, letting people know what's going on in the business, letting people know initiatives, letting people know what we're up to, um, and over communicating that to allow everyone to be involved because. If there's one thing that we've learned, it's that you know, great ideas come from anywhere, and you hear that a lot, but um, it's true. And and keeping people in the dark is something that uh, is not inspiring. And so, trying to make sure that we're we're keeping people in the know, inspiring them to uh, stay a part of the mission and to feel great and feel feel positive about where they're at. Um, is one thing, and then broadly, we have a set of cultural values mm. that that we hit on and we harp on, and mm. uh, they're a part of our reviews process. Mm. They're a part of the some way of that we hire. Uh, one of them is like boldly entrepreneurial, is like a kind of the headline, and that means that people are able to self-start. They're able to go out and get results. They don't need a lot of direction uh, because in this world, like. The thing that we always emphasize is like, yeah, we're 50 people, but the people against whom we're, com we're competing are thousands of people, and they're doing the same things. Like fundamentally, we're all doing the same things. Right. And so they just have more people doing it, and so everyone right. needs to be able to do a lot. By the way, you guys have to be uh, doing the work of a, a thousand people per person, right? <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it's insane. <laughs> um, and so, you know, prioritization, the ability to go out and do things mm -hmm. uh, that you think are right. Um, is really, really important. Um, so boldly entrepreneurial, positivity is big in our, in our company, is just need to be positive, need to be a good, you know, a force of flight, you know, um, to yeah. make people smile. And well, your product sort of does that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, 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 I mean, it's built around what the It's built is. into the product. Yeah, and so, you know, a few others like that where, where you know, we, we reinforce them, we harp on them, and they're all tied back to this mission that the company has of brightening up people's days and giving them that kind of, constant reminder of the weekend, constant reminder of the things that are important in life, of friends, family, and smiling, you know, yeah, keeping, a, yeah. keeping a smile on your face. So, Tom, I have one last question. I can go on and on, because this, this is fascinating. Um, before I ask it, just let's point people towards 
your site, where should they check you out online, on social media? Yeah, chubbies.com, and you know you can search Chubbies uh, on any of the social media platforms. Snapchat, it's Chubbies Shorts, uh, with two S's in the middle. Um, yeah, but pretty easy to find if you yeah. remember the name is Chubbies. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, last question about lessons. Um, what are some lessons you learned from your dad or other mentors that you had? Because it probably starts early on. Yeah. Yeah, you know, first What's mentor was certainly my dad. Yeah. I think the thing that I learned from him was work ethic. Um, since I was a young lad, I was, I was, I was, I was in school. Did you have to work in in some of the Wendy's or what? I did, yeah. and then also I was working at. He, you know, he didn't want to give me any any opportunities. You know, so you clean the toilets. <laughs> yeah, so so well, he didn't even want to give me a job. So you know, You're he, would, fight for the he job. would make me go get. So I worked at a I worked at a car, an auto dealership for a few summers, washing cars, prepping cars for sale. I, looked, I was a used car sales yeah. lot guy. Um, and I was also working in the back office doing customer service, working in the service department. So I did a lot of like car work. Um, but from him, it was, yeah, it was work ethic and it was work ethic as it pertained to school. I was, I would wake up at like, you know, six in the morning and start school at home before I went to school and then I'd go to school and then get out of school and two more school. So he was really big into that and it was yeah. awesome because, you know, I think one of the things that you realize starts to differentiate entrepreneurs is the ability, the tenacity, really the ability to stick with something and crank through the hard times and see setbacks as just that, setbacks. They're not, they're not the end of the company. They're not, they're not the be all end all yeah. because you just got to keep chugging, you got to keep innovating. Hard um, work and so the others probably, from him. Yeah, he's of? a smart guy. He's yeah. a smart guy. So lots of others. He taught me how to write. Um, you know, he, uh, he taught me a lot of stuff. In terms of like maxims, there's, Nothing really that comes to mind uh, immediately, but I think tenacity, hard work was always the name yeah. of the game for him. Um, and uh, and you know, continue learning. You know, when he when I went to st when I went to school, he was as uneducated as I was about what modern like the you know entrepreneurship in Silicon Valley was like. But he was learning right along with me and and teach me a lot about that. And so that was huge. And you know, he's obviously a mentor and a hero. Yeah. So yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, Live RC. Check out chubbies.com. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.